We can communicate, but what is there to say? We used to assemble in buildings to learn about the other members of society. Then there became many, and we could not meet to learn about lifestyles. We began to meet in books, on the radio, in films, on the television. Now we can meet again on the earth as below, through our media. We can meet metaphysically through the use of this screen. The images are part of the same process. You are looking at electromagnetic waves of the earth while standing on it. Haven't we met before? The 1950s in San Francisco was ground zero for a counterculture that would eventually alter American life. Artists, poets, filmmakers, dancers, and performers recognizing a like-minded will to liberate culture from the blinding impositions of the status quo, collaborated, sharing an interchange of ideas that would impact the future of Ur, of California and beyond. This zeitgeist of jazz opened portals for a new way of seeing that would soon culminate in a collective yearning for a new way of life. Signaled by the poet visionary Allen Ginsberg when he read his incendiary howl in an art gallery called The Six. The gallery was run by a collective of artists who along with the poets who read that night, Michael McClure, Philip Lamantia, Philip Whelan, and Gary Snyder, saw themselves subsumed in what soon became known as the Beat Era canon. The poet and publisher Lawrence Ferlinghetti attended that night and would publish Howl for City Lights in North Beach. The show was organized and attended by many artists who would later become the fixtures of the Delexi, a gallery which was encouraged to open when the six closed. Just around the corner from City Lights, Zalexi opened upstairs from the Jazz Workshop, one of North Beach's most notable venues for music. Delexi, meaning to covet and to love, would have a constant soundtrack with some of the Bay Area's most notable musicians. The decision to open a gallery at a jazz venue was key. The gallery, established by a jazz musician programmer named Jim Newman and the artist, poet Bob Alexander, would offer a space where new directions of music and art would be housed under one roof. The Delexi had ties to Los Angeles, where Alexander and Newman's close friend, Walter Hopps, had established Ferris Gallery. Newman, who had been a silent partner in Ferris, would share a program with Walter Hopps that would catalyze the art scene in both cities. Delexi endured as a gallery from 1958 to 1969, and throughout this time, Newman, a musician and programmer, would offer the public one of its most powerful convergences. Its first year showcased two generations of abex and gestural painters, a scene that was beginning to gain national attention. Many of these painters saw the canvas as a catalyst to overcome the traumas of war, while collectively they often saw their work as complementary ethos and soundtrack to the revolution of jazz. Many of these artists who had their debuts at Delexi became world-renowned and the book documents unknown chapters of their gestations in San Francisco. Delexi, a gallery and beyond, pushes further and chronicles many artists who have been lost to the record. Outside of Jada Feo, whose The Eyes grace its cover, the book chronicles many artists for their first time, lesser-known women of abstract expressionism, Lois Lazarus and Irene Tavener, while highlighting Sonia Getoff and Deborah Remington in their early careers. The Delexi also began showing artists who were exploring conceptualism, minimalism, and what would later become known as light and space. Over its years, Delexi's curatorial mission questioned established modalities, seeking confrontation with the unknown, then explored and at times the convulsive to shock us into a new way of thinking. The diverse program often at times appeared conflicting, however, as a collective whole, it offered a powerful new voice, rattling convention, seeking a new clarity and deeper purpose. 
Newman, as both a musician and music curator, would play a pivotal role amongst his art program, but would soon find a new soundtrack with the revolutionary new music, embracing the new electronic technology coming out of the Bay and the local San Francisco Tate Music Center. San Francisco at this time was an epicenter of interdisciplinary cross-pollination, largely ushered by the dance practitioner Anna Halprin and her dancers' workshop, who shared space and collaborated with the composers of the SFTMC, as well as the Actors' Workshop and the Experimental Canyon Cinema, offering an environment of cross-pollination that Newman exported into the gallery. In 1965, the artist Charles Ross, who had been working with Halprin and the San Francisco Tate Music Center's founder-composer Morton Subotnik, presented a collaboration with the Dancers' Workshop at Delexi. The enduring Delexi story portrays the importance of the real-time experience of art within the gallery setting presenting how this intimate encounter may collectively congeal a new way of seeing and distilling a philosophy for a new way of life. This book presents a gallery as a place beyond the presentation of art, a place to champion a new ethos and ideology, which eventually may be parlayed into new mediums of presentation and new modalities of expression. The book documents how this delexi ethos evolved beyond the gallery's walls and eventually transformed into an interdisciplinary approach expressing itself through a multitude of new media. More notably, Newman went on to produce the film Space is the Place. Here, Delexi's license to enact an ideology into the very fabric of a film merged social activism with a creative license. Sun Ra's cosmology formed the backbone of the Afrofuturist movement and with creative license, the film has become a key influence. How do you know I'm real? Yeah. I'm not real, I'm just like you. You don't exist in this society. If you did, your people wouldn't be seeking equal rights. You're not real. If you were, you'd have some status among the nations of the world. So we're both myths. I do not come to you as a reality. I come to you as the myth, because that's what black people are, myths. <laughs> I came from a dream that the black man dreamed long ago. I'm actually a present sent to you by your ancestors. Television has been uninteresting because we were not using it to get through the screen to anything. Now we are.
This October 26, Delexi, a gallery and beyond, will have a symposium at the legendary City Lights bookstore. Live interviews with Delexi founder Jim Newman will conjoin San Francisco tape center composers Morton Subotnik and Ramon Sender. Also in attendance will be Other Minds co-founder Charles Amerikanian and Sun Ra scholar Jean Schwed, as well as host of Delexi artists. The Delexi author Laura Whitcomb will be in attendance as well as Narian Dickerson with the Delexi Research Director hosted by the Director of City Lights, Peter Marveyas, will further explore this little known history. <laughs>